First elected in 2010 to represent the 96th Assembly District, lives in New Haven and fled Annika. Uh, he served on the New Haven Board of Aldermen, um, uh, headed the City Plan Commission. Uh, originally from Rhode Island. As an alderman here, he served the ninth ward. Um, and uh, uh, it is now your turn, sir, to uh, speak to us, uh, uh, you know, from a state assembly point of view. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for coming out this evening. On the other side of me this evening, you'll hear stories of passion and perseverance, stories of folks who recognize the challenges in front of them who were put in a position due to aggressive prosecutors, sympathetic juries, lack of evidence notwithstanding found themselves up against untenable odds and really persevered to a point where we can thankfully say uh, that their futures are in better place. As we look in Connecticut now, we evaluate the landscape, the political landscape that has a place like Connecticut, one of the remaining two states in New England that still has that county as a reasonable and justifiable and uh, likely outcome for a series of capital offenses. We have the evidence on either side of me tonight of why it's an appropriate tool. Two years ago, Gary Holder Winfield, who's sitting uh, about five feet in front of me, uh, took on an impossible challenge as the lead sponsor, as a freshman, uh, his first action in office was to introduce to the General Assembly a bill that would lead to abolition. Now, I don't know anyone who will lead he'd actually be successful. And myself included, anyone around him, I doubt he would tell you that he had too many folks who were supporting him because this was a good idea. As we watched his passion unfold over two years, you've heard the same arguments. Well, Connecticut isn't really a place where the death penalty is utilized very often, and usually for very severe, very obvious cases, and we don't really need to uh, address abolition in this body, because Connecticut, we're you know, reasonably minded group of folks, and the idea that we put someone to death is just so absurd. To my left, you just heard a story. What made that death penalty wasn't on the table, but an aggressive prosecutor, a sympathetic juror, no evidence, he found someone committed, committed uh, of a crime that could have been now this happens throughout the state on a routine basis. We watched two years ago the conversations around equity, the conversations around how the death penalty is administered, who is more likely to be uh, found guilty and convicted, their lack of legal recourse. We heard all the evidence about how this is a costly system to uphold. We heard all the reasonable reasons why states, our state, should not put people to death. But still, the public policy justification, the very real evidence on either side of me tonight of a misappropriated tool, uh, has not compelled our state to move forward with abolition. You have now, thankfully, a governor who has articulated on numerous occasions that he would sign into law an act of the legislature that banned the death penalty. Unfortunately, Connecticut, unlike most states, our governor does not have real power in this case. There's no ability for him to commute the sentence. There's no ability for him to pardon folks. This is all done uh, by a board of clemency. It's essentially outside of his control. He does not sit on that board of clemency. The legislature has to pass this act. We have to go through the process of taking this off the table for us to be able to say that that penalty is eliminated in Connecticut. Now, two years ago, as Gary Holder Winfield found more and more elected supporters who would sign on with evidence of public courage to take this challenge on, we realized the rest of the state doesn't necessarily agree with us. We have um, a very well-known and very recently covered uh, tragedy in Cheshire that took center stage uh, during that debate that inflamed the passions and emotions of everyone who knew anything about that case. I don't need to read has some details for all of us here. I think we've all seen it plenty over the last few months. Uh, but it certainly changes the conversation from one about policy and how policy influences appropriate politics, where that intersection is made with how we move the state forward. It's an emotion starts to uh, inform the politics in a greater extent. And I think we're now in a place where, again, Representative Holden Winfield has introduced a bill that would abolish the death penalty. I signed 
signed on, another uh, member of the state Senate has signed on, and we each have had conversations uh, with our colleagues, particularly mine with freshman legislators who come in this year to see if we have a body, a group of, of legislators who are willing to take on that fight again, uh, and they are. But in the backdrop is the emotion that's informing the politics more than the policy is. I remain optimistic that we have for us an opportunity to move the death penalty from the table. I remain optimistic that the passion I saw two years ago, Gary, did what no one thought possible can happen again. I remain optimistic that even though we lost a series of vital seats, both in the state senate and in the state house, and even though the numbers aren't necessarily where they want them to be right now, that this is a conversation that we can continue to have, that we can rise above the emotion of particular cases that with a lot of people's help in this room, uh, folks who've made phone calls, who've written letters, who've held on numerous occasions, folks who've come up and testified, folks who've come up and engaged their neighbors, their friends, anyone they know to have this today in a public setting, to take the emotion away from it, to get back to the core principles of public policy, to really push what Connecticut Connecticut should lead again on this issue. We will succeed again, but it's going to be only because people to my left and right can evidence what can go wrong in a place like Connecticut when we have aggressive prosecutors who lack evidence but can find a sympathetic jury. What can happen when a state that thinks so highly of itself that we never do anything wrong refuses to acknowledge that we can. We're going to need each one of the voices who will come up, who will testify, who will care passionately about the future of these men, but also the men and women in the entire state of Connecticut who know that at our best, a state does not put people to death. And I hope and I pray over the next few months that conversation can be more about the public policy, the things that you all know, the reasons why you're all here. This is not an appropriate tool for government to engage in. And while many of us won't lose too much sleep over some of the most heinous crimes being punished with a heavy hand, I think we all no, that state, my state, your state, should not be utilizing the death penalty in that manner. And I hope to see you all over the next few weeks and months. I hope that this debate kind of continues in a, in a formal setting where we can influence and swing votes who will get this through the General Assembly, both the House and the Senate, to the governor's desk, where we can sign this into law, and for once and for all, let this issue be wrapped. Again, your work your passion is going to be instrumental, whatever you can do over the next few weeks and months. Gary single-handedly took it on a few years ago, and people who were tired from the fight, and having this fight for a number of years, all told him that it was impossible. The evidence that it was not. It's our turn to evidence that we can get it done, get it passed, and to a governor's desk has already acknowledged that he will sign it into law. So thank you all for caring so much about this issue. It's not, it's not an issue that uh, many folks feel comfortable coming out testifying about, feel comfortable spending the hours talking to colleagues who might feel emotionally charged for one reason or another, who will put their name on the line and say, this is what my state, this is what we need to do.